Good morning, folks. Uh, this e today I'm going to talk to you about this little book. And this little book really is about me. Because everything that's in here is what I believe in, in terms of business. Right? And it goes back to the... I think uh, Gary here uh, would know. Uh, last three years I've been giving li little presentations at the promenade. It was based on uh, my blog articles. You, you, you've heard it all. So I put together the, the, the article from the very early days when we first launched our uh, networking event, right, downtown. And it's really based on two things. One is my experience. I used to be a lawyer out in Malaysia. used to advise a lot of manufacturers shipping stuff out to North America and Europe. And the other thing was... Uh, it's also based on my reading from a lot of business school uh, articles because I just love to read and I think that's something all of us love and if we love that, we will succeed in whatever we do because things change and uh, so we need to continually read and I read all the business school stuff and I see that the successful business guys instinctively do what the professors research and tell us to do, right? Uh, that's what it's all about, sustaining high growth. So uh, my, my background to this is that I haven't been on the legal side of when things were great and people sign contracts and they are fantastic about it. I've also seen how they tear up this very same contract that they thought would make them million, right? And, and I always think it's crazy, you know, that you don't, you don't think in terms of what if you can't hit the targets? What's the exit strategy? Right? I think every contract needs an exit strategy because things change, right? And the most important thing is to remember that when things change, we have to change too. Okay? And that's why we've got to keep reading and that's what this article is all about. My tagline these days as a business consultant is to say, get it right in the boardroom, stay out of the courtroom. Right? And someone said I should actually wear a t-shirt with that on. You know? and because that's the, the takeaway for today, really. And how, how do you get it right in a boardroom? It goes down to something very simple, and it talks about, it's all about values. And I think what's interesting is, before we started the presentation, we were talking about business seems to be slow, right? And what fascinates me is that it doesn't matter which politician comes in, the market seems to be booming, the stock markets. Right? There's a lot of money in there, but we don't see it in the commercial sector. And I'm just wondering if things are changing. And that's why we have to evolve a business. And whenever I look at things like Sears, I say, what a waste. Because a business, if you think about it, should be able to survive generations of business leaders and employees. You know, a, a business is actually an, an entity or a legal personality that has the potential of immortality. So when I look at Sears, I say, what a shame. Because it could have just carried on, it could have evolved, right? We, we see other organizations evolving, so why can't some big organization continue to evolve? And all of us have to remember that, that even as you grow, you could fumble and fall. And that, that, that's the whole idea of these articles. So, and the thing is, to do that, you need values, okay? And I think two things are happening in today's world that we all need to know. And you, you guys know I'm very philosophical, right? So the, the two things we need to know is, one, you keep hearing about this new technology revolution happening. And we're wondering how it's going to impact all our businesses. And just now we're talking, is it that people are not going out, they're going more on, uh, online and buying stuff, right? So you've got all this artificial intelligence going to come in, and there's this big concern, is it going to be the rise of the machines taking over? And so people are anxious about their jobs and so they don't want to spend whatever money you're making now, right? Uh, or is it going to be new opportunities? Personally, I see new opportunities because, one, uh, you remember when agriculture was the mainstay and say 80% of people worked on farms. Today, it's just 2% in North America, but there's jobs for everyone, right? So it's going to be something new and I travel, I travel, right? And I see all over the world, people are just coming into the middle class. Those who are embracing change. So that's driving the global economy. And that sets a price even for our local markets. 
right? So uh, the, the important thing, therefore, is to look for something which is constant that you can use as a base of your business and build. And that's where I, I talk about values. You know, we all have heard about you know, vision, mission, goals, and then it's just uh, words that we write. Some just Google or online, see some nice phrase, and I put it down. That that should be our mission, right? But if, if your vision and your mission is not based on values that you believe in, you burn out. We've all had business uh, ideas were put to us that potentially could make millions, but we look at it and say, no, it's not my thing. It's not for me, right? And we, uh, we walk away from it. And we see others uh, getting in it and being successful, but we don't feel comfortable with it. And that's because it doesn't gel with our personal values. So whatever you want to do to, and you want it to sustain, it's got to be in line with your personal values. You've got to be able to wake up in the morning and say, it's worth uh, uh, doing it, right? So values are the most important thing. And that's what leadership is about in business, values, right? Now the thing, why it's so difficult for small business to, to understand the difference between values, vision, mission, and goals is because as a small entrepreneur, you're doing everything yourself. So it's different, difficult to segment your mind. But the big businesses, they have a board of directors, and that's the team that focuses on vision, the values and vision. Then you've got a management team that looks at mission. The mission is to uh, achieve the, the vision of the business. Right? And then you've got at the operational level, uh, everyone else that focuses on goals and targets, practical targets. So when you're on your own, you have to look at all the different levels uh, in one head, and that's tough. Right? So the, the thing we've got to do is if we want to make sure that we, our daily targets don't distract us from our long-term values and vision, we need to have a team of uh, people around us to remind us of the different aspects of values, vision, mission, and goals. And one of the ways to do it is to uh, I either have uh, uh, advisors, mentors, maybe your, your, your accountants and your lawyers and your uh, business advisors, they can come in and help you, or from the industry. You know, we, we get involved in our own personal industry organization and we find someone who can be a mentor. And it's good to have that benchmark person so that we keep uh, these uh, values top of mind even as we hit daily targets. We do the necessary stuff. Right? And it's tough to hit targets because we all read the book, Eat the Frog <laughs> in the morning, right? Uh, even if it gags you kind of thing. But if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to stay focused. On the, on the long game of, of business, right? And uh, the other important thing that I, I want to uh, also talk about is what are you selling? Because all of us, uh, you know, uh, over the time we, we hear about something or we learn something and we have certain skills and we get very excited about our product, right? But not all things that excite us can be monetized, okay? So I, I've got this basic uh, diagram here, right, uh, which talks about price and uh, customers, right? And a lot of uh, products are actually here where they talk about products that excite you. It is something that excites you. And because it excites you, think must be a lot of people out there who are also excited about it. But when you go out there and do your pitch, nobody bites. And you wonder why, right? The, the trick, trick is to find something in your skill set, in your knowledge set, that would delight business uh, customers. Right? Because when it, when it delights customers, you're going to get lots of customers and you'll be able to price it at a sweet spot that makes you a lot of money. You, you can have a, a mass product right, that uh, has got lots of customers but low price, a $5 t-shirt. Right? Or you can have a niche market exclusive, a $500 designer uh, product, with, uh, high price but a niche market, very small. But if you can find the sweet spot of delighting, you can get a large number of people to buy at a very good price. Right? So you can only find this if you are uh, passionate about what you believe in. Right? If, you, if you look at the smartphones and all that, that's what the, those guys do. Right? The guys who created it, they're passionate about it, but because they're so passionate, that they transfer the delight to 
customers, people are willing to pay the price. We are willing to pay the kind of price, right? So, so that, that's the important takeaway. The other important takeaway that we want is to understand the difference between leadership and uh, management. So I've got a simple uh, diagram here that talks about uh, competitive leadership, which is what the whole book is about. This is what I believe. And in very simple terms, we, we, uh, you, we've got to be market uh, uh, savvy as leaders, right? Now, the difference between uh, um, uh, market, a leader in marketing and a manager in marketing is the manager focuses on customer relations because his focus is sales. But the leader has to look at community relations. And it's, it's no, uh, I think, coincidence that all of us here, leading our own business, are also involved in the community. Because if you, unless you know, understand the community, you will not be able to identify customers in the community. Right? So, because like they say, all markets are global, but all business is local. Right? And that's what community relations is about. The other uh, important thing is at the operational level of your business, right? Managers focus on risk management, right? But leaders have to also look at quality standards. So quality and risk. We understand that if you can de deliver quality, we can reduce risk. So uh, once the leader has set the quality standard and risk, the managers can focus on the risk element and manage the risk. When it comes to the financial aspect, uh, managers focus on internal audit, right? But leaders focus on uh, also sustainability audit, right? So it's not just internal audit to say you're, you're hitting all your financial target. It's also, is it sustainable? And the final thing is uh, ethics. And, uh, uh, the manager and leaders have to look at uh, ethics, and that goes back to your values again. Okay, so that is in essence what what the book is about. Open for discussion.